So I cut the straps off. There were plastic straps all over this thing. When you get one of these, very sturdy box. And you'll see, that's how it's laid out. Simple as that. This is a big container box. They put the plug into it intentionally. And by the way, there is the plug. You will see that it hangs this way on the wall. You plug it in. So if you don't have this, this is a USA version. You're not going to make it work. It does have a conversion from this to 110. So what I'm going to do, take this out, open that box, take that out, show you what we got, and then we'll get on with it. Okay, so what's going on is I took out the box, took out the welder. I'm going to show you real quick. This is what you can expect to see in your box. And that's what you can expect to see from the welder. I'm going to spin them all around. I'm going to unpack this stuff, show you a little bit more. Okay, so because this is already unpacked and that is not, I'm going to show you a little bit about this. This, like I said, is a 50 amp plasma cutter combined with a 5 amp to 200 amp TIG welder. And it also has... Uh, stick welding capability that comes with a stick and all the stuff you need in between. So this is your basic panel. This is again the 2020 version. It was introduced in 2020. Uh, I'm not going to get into how everything functions. You guys, uh, if you look it up online, go to the Everlast website. You'll find a ton of information. You can even download the PDF for the owner's manual and take a good look at it. Now I'm going to show you basically these front ports here. These are quick locks here and there. Pilot arc. And there you have the control for either the um, the foot pedal or the trigger on the TIG. This is a uh, quick release for the gas inlet. And basically the controls pretty much speak for themselves. You can go online and look it up. I just want to give you a quick detailed view of what you're going to expect here from this new model. I'm going to show you some things you may or may not see from other people's perspectives once they get their welders. This is a pretty good size switch here for controlling it. It comes with a safety breakers in there. In the back, you'll notice you have a capability for a ground wire. This is a 5 8 port for your gas. And this is basically a, kind of like on a swivel in there. It's fairly long cord. This is for your... Uh, your 220 or your 240, depending on how you look at it. There you go. And basically that's the machine. It's really uh, not that ominous and large. I'll show you real quick here. Ah, there it goes. Anyway, you'll see that height-wise, looking at about 12 inches. Width-wise, you know, not that big. Roughly seven. The other way around, you know, you and uh, pull it out. I think it's something like 14 inches front to back. Once it's all set up, it's bigger than that. It'll take room on your cart. Now, if you're looking for, uh, you know, it's got the strap on top, etc. Nice little machine. These ports are only, they're pretty close to the table. So, you know, you're looking at about an inch and three quarter, two inches tops. So they're pretty close. You do have rubber feet on the bottom of it. I'm not going to flip it over. But you can see them right there on the base, front and back. So that is basically the essential unit. Now what it comes with is a whole bunch of stuff. Hang on a minute. First off, and you might laugh, is the owner's manual. However, the owner's manual is fairly generic. It runs through, but it has a lot of useful information. If you've never welded before, you certainly don't know the new welders that they're coming out with. Everything is new these days. They change the rules on a few things. Not very many. Most of the time, it's all just basic stuff. However, if you're getting something new, I suggest you read the manual. This one here isn't that great. I took the one offline from the website. It's a little bit different. I downloaded it. It's like 40 pages. Most of the information is the same, but, you know, that being said, that's the manual. Read it, because why not? Okay, first out of the box, the TIG torch. Nope. Oh. My God, I screwed that one up. 
This is not a thick torch. <laughs> this is the plasma torch. And boy, does that look purple right now. But I'm telling you, it's really not that purple. I don't know. Let me try on this out like that. Might give it the true color. Hard to say. Kind of purple. Yeah. Yeah, it's purple. Purple or yellow. This is an S45 torch. It takes S45 consumables. You can buy them just about anywhere. It's your quick lock. And gas port and your electric cord. Okay, that's what you're looking at for your torch. All right, not going to get into all the specifics about how long everything is, etc. etc. I'm just going to show you what's what here. <laughs> Again, this is a plasma torch. So let's go to the next one. Okay, now we're on to the TIG torch. Anyway. Again, this is the plug. Take a good look at it. You can see what's uh, useful and what's not based on the, your pin configurations and what you may or may not want to change out. Comes with a um, a denim coating cover sleeve. Again, gas port, quick lock, and that was electric connection. Screw on. Already has the handle installed. This is an this is a um, a 26 style TIG torch. That's basically the size of it. You can look up other videos on the size. This is a pretty sizable torch. It's one of the beefiest ones you can get. You might want to go smaller as you get into TIG welding. But um, basically, this is it. It's all wrapped up nicely. They do have the option of putting different covers on these. They tell you on their website, depending on. I guess what's available and what they have. But in this case, this is what they put. And you get this handy little bit of consumables with it. Um, here we go. Let me read the numbers. You get a five, six, and a seven. And from what I read, you go in all the sizes you might want to get yourself started. I'm not going to get into all that. Like I said, go to their website and check it out. I'm just going to give you the details on what we have here. Okay, so because I got one hand free and I'm being crazy about this, I'm going to take out the other bag of goodies. This here is the parts and the fittings that you're going to need for your plasma cutter and these ones right here. I'm going to show you in a little bit of detail so you'll see. Quick connect that goes on to your, well it's an air dryer, it's actually in here, I'll show you. This is also a hose barb with a 5 8 to go onto the hose that they give you right here. It's pre-cut. It's pretty short, but it doesn't need to be long because it's just connected at the back of the machine and it goes to the gas port. So that you're going to run, but you're not going to run gas through there. You're going to run air. This runs the uh, compressed air to run the plasma torch. And all of this is for the plasma torch. So as you can see, all of the fittings are there. You have the quick port for your air compressor. You've got the hose barb port for the top side. And on the bottom side, this part and this part go together. And they go into the back of the machine where I showed you that port with the red cap. This is a block port fitting. It's a little stub there. It's basically to block the extra port on this little bitty dryer they give you. This is actually not intended to dry the air on your air compressor as it makes its way to the plasma torch. This is actually designed to take out what might or may not remain in the line as it starts up. You should have an air dryer on your compressor before you run your plasma torch. Any liquid coming through to the plasma torch will literally destroy it. You don't want to do that. So you got to mount this properly. You should have a desiccant dryer before it connects to this with compressed air. Then it comes out of here, wiggles around, goes into the back of the machine. So that's that part of what's in the box. Uh, let's see if I can do this here. This here is the hose they give you. Now, depending, this is the gas hose for the TIG. Online, they show you something that looks very similar to this. 
and it's fitted. But this instead is a little different, but it carries the gas. Um, it looks a little more, I don't know, you'd say reliable, but um, this would connect to your uh, argon gas regulator, which is in a box over here. I'll show you that in a minute. But I uh, don't remember the length of these, and I'm not going to measure it. Like I said, you can go online for very specific information on all of these. But this is the gas hose they gave me for running the argon. So we'll set that right there. Next thing out of the box, because it's right there, is the ground clamp and the stick welder. It's a standard stick welder. I don't remember the length again. Quick connects on this and again on that. It's pretty beepy. It's basic standard stuff. So you can either be wowed and impressed or not. Doesn't matter. Here we go. Now get to the foot pedal, which you have the option of doing a foot pedal with this machine. It's not that wide. You'll notice, you know, my hand is an average hand. I got a glove on because I had stitches on my hand, and that's the only reason I'm wearing it. But this is gritty. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm not going to get into that. But again, there's your port pin configuration for that. And connected this way and there's the base so this is what you're paying for okay now this one of the few remaining items is in case you're having to go somewhere to somebody's house who does not have the beefy outlet on their wall for the high-end power which gives you more amps for welding so you can run this on 110 and plug it in to the wall right there and you won't get the top end out of this machine doing that but it will work in most applications that you would need for quick repairs and other things the one of the last things that remain in the box oh and this here is a sweet thing by the way this was hiding in there and this is a sight wheel for the plasma cutter and as you'll see it is a nice looking piece. It looks pretty solid to me, and it's got the uh, easy turn nuts here to snug it up on there good. You can set the height of your torch so you don't burn your tips out as easily. You can go around shapes and circles and other things more smoothly with it. This is a good thing to have, and these they don't give these away on the store. Uh, I think they run about 25 bucks or more. That's a nice piece to have. That is an addition. But here, and this, this is it. This is all you get. What's left? This is your argon regulator. So, let me put this down and pause this. You don't want to see all this. Okay, so this is your argon regulator. And I don't know if you can see that against the backdrop, but it is in PSI, which is awesome because some machines uh, from various countries, I won't mention them, come in liters and or other measuring mediums. But uh, it's a good, uh, solid looking gauge. Solid brass is pretty heavy. Got the ball in there. And uh, it looks like this should do the job. Now, with this, I did notice that you have this port here. It doesn't have some of the additions for hose barbs and other things that you might see on uh, individual sales of these particular uh, regulators. You can look online, you'll see adapters and etc. cetera, et cetera. This has a connection here that mates directly with the connection for the hose that I showed you a minute ago because one end of the hose, like I said, goes to the machine, this end goes to here, and it will fit directly. So you don't need to get anything else. So this will work on that, and that's the way they set up the hose. Now, if you're gonna, you don't want this connected to the back of your welder. You can't if you're gonna use the plasma cutter. You have to swap this out, put the hose from that into the back of the machine, screw it in, that's only to run air, again, through this plasma cutter. It's a pilot arc plasma cutter, so cut real well. I think it's up to a half inch, I believe, uh, salvage cut or something like that they refer to. 
Um, anyway, for around the garage, around the home, which is what I'm using it for, it's quite sufficient. So there you go. That's it. That's uh, what you get in the box. It's a brand new 2020 version uh, of the uh, of the um, Everlast multi-purpose machines. And this one here is a uh, plasma cutter. It's a TIG machine, a stick welder. And again, you can do 50 amps. Looks like a Christmas tree there. Um, 50 amps plasma. And 200 amps up to with TIG as low as 5 amps and up to 160 amps with the stick welder. And again, you get the foot pedal. You get the hand control on the TIG. You get a number 26 TIG, and you get, and it's down there, you get the number S40, uh, 40, what did I say, 45, S45 plasma torch. So there you go. There you have it, and I, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little informative for you. Maybe you'll uh, go to Everlast.com, check it out. I think it's actually Everlast Generators. They're based in California. They've been around a while. These uh, welders are quite popular, and multi-purpose welders are becoming more and more useful around the house. I'm sure I'm going to use it in my garage. So enjoy, and I hope it was good for you. Thanks. As I'm putting the air regulator on the back of my Everlast Ultra Arc 205, brand new 2020 version, um, realizing that my cord is not fully attached. The only way to fix this is to go inside the machine. Not happy about that. This does not slide on here. I'm going to call the company and see what they can do to remedy this. Anyway, the fitting that goes here for my air compressor, which is right here, the quick fitting, is different than my current fittings. It's ever so close. But one thing you should note is that this is what I'm using, a standard quarter-inch NTP connection. This is not quarter-inch NTP. And it's very short, has sort of a silicone seal that pretty much busts open when you tighten it. If you'll notice the differences, and they're so subtle, actually, it took me a while to figure it out. This collar shoulder right here is just the tiniest bit longer, and <laughs> it's magnetic because it's steel, um, than the one on the right, which is brass. So it won't fit. It just won't go in. And so now i got to find me one of these connectors that's going to go on there. Or one of these connectors that has that thread. Not something I thought I would have to encounter. From a company based in California selling Everlast welders. Um, and anyway, that's the issue. One and two. I'm trying to set it up, and there it is. And in case you're wondering, because you haven't seen the other video, um, this is the Ultra Arc 205, capable of. Uh, all kinds of things. I'm not even going to get into the list. Go online and look it up. But, uh, oh God. Yep. Good machine. Look at my other video. But you might, uh, might have this problem when you go to set it up. I don't know if it's common across the board or not. That probably is. <laughs> I should have saw that one coming. But, uh, but having a cord popping out of the machine. That's just a big inconvenience. Come on. All right. You know, not happy, Everlast. Up your game. Check your quality control.